Hey everyone, back with a repair video. Thanks for being patient. It's been an incredibly busy summer, especially after last year when it was... Hmm, something happened last year that caused the workflow to be really slow. Anyway, we're back at it. <laughs> this summer is as crazy as it always was, used to be. Um, so I haven't really had a lot of time to spend uh, filming um, and doing things that I'd like to do. But I think I have time to do one for you. And I think this one will be really interesting because we've got a very crunched bell here. And this one should be... Um, I think this should be interesting to see the process. Now you're all probably familiar with that trombone crunched bell video I did a couple of years ago. It's got a lot of views. Keep going. I'd, I'd like to get that over a million views if I could. Um, we'll see how it happens. Anyway, this trumpet, um, unlike that trombone, we're not going to anneal the bell. We're not going to refinish the bell. This is a student line horn uh, from a high school. And it's in, I had to resolder the lead pipe. It needs to be chem flushed. And we need to put a new um, third slide uh, finger ring holder on this. So we got a number of things to do, but I want to show um, some bell work on this because I always think it provides a good visual and just some good metal working techniques. So stay tuned. Here we go. We'll go ahead and start with just kind of pulling this part that's gotten wrinkled back, kind of just pull the contour down. There's some very sharp wrinkles and dents on this. But we got a couple new, not new techniques, but different techniques than, than what I've showed, shown on other videos. So I'm going to do this one. Now if you like what I do, go ahead. Please like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. You know that I do drum cover videos where I play along with some of my favorite songs or things that I find are interesting. I also do gig stories, and I'm going to do episode number six coming up real soon here. And it's about being coerced into playing, doing a performance that you never wanted to do. How could that possibly happen? Well, you're going to find out. But you only find out if you hit the notifications bell after you sub. And I'd also like everyone to, um, see, you can already tell that's pulled down a bit. I'd like everyone to post a comment. I think comments is a very valuable and important thing. And um, even more than that, pass this around to your musician friends, your band directors or students. That would really be good. Anyway, there we start. And we'll go to the next thing. Take my old rocket roller and start to contour this. Let's pull it over here. just one tool of many, but more important than the tools is the hands behind them and the knowledge how to use them and how to approach brass. You know, anybody can buy a set of tools, but working this, it just takes years of practice really know the feel of the metal because it, it's definitely a feel driven thing. The bell mandrel, trumpet bell mandrel. This is one of my favorite techniques actually. Here we apply some paraffin wax to the bell flare because we need our burnisher to slide across the lacquered surface and not scratch it all. 
real bad, but the other reality is, is usually when they get to this condition, they're pretty scratched up. And then we'll take our burnisher, the semi-round side, and I'll also apply paraffin wax to that. I don't really need to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and spray it with a, a lubricant. Just for added protection and ease. The burnisher glides much more smoothly with the lubrication. This is not unlike the way a bell is made. When they spin this bell on a lathe, you know, it's just sheet brass that's brazed over and then it's spun on a mandrel on a lathe. So a lot of times I've gotten comments on that trombone video where they go, well, how does that affect the resonance of the bell or, you know, the pitch? Well, it wouldn't affect the pitch because it's not changing the length, but can it harden the brass? I suppose a little bit, but it's a pretty subjective thing, and really you're just down here to the amplifying portion of the horn, so I don't know. If you think it, it's going to affect the sound, it probably will. If you just want it to be right and look good, you probably are not going to get too hung up, but if you're an obsessive compulsive type, um, just be careful with your instrument all there is to it. If you can't live with a dent and you can't live without the idea of being it removed, um, I don't know. That's something I can't help. I can only work the brass. So we've got this contoured pretty well, but now we're going to go down in here with the point of the burnisher. You have to be careful not to get this on the brass because that'll That'll gouge it really quick. And you know my favorite saying, not that that's ever happened to me. <laughs> uh, everything has happened when you've been doing this for 34 or 5 years. Not everything has happened to me. You stay in it long enough and everything will. So we'll just go ahead and, and redo this. And working metal is all about shaping it one way and then shaping it another way and kind of back and forth back and forth so we just work this and burnish it and then you know what I'm going to do next don't you I'm going to take a hammer to it and dent it again. No, I'm not. I'm going to... That's actually how you learn how to do this stuff. When we were in repair school back in the 80s, they'd give us an old horn and they'd say, okay, dent it up and then remove the dents. <laughs> we had one guy in class. He would just sit there with his hands folded staring at this trumpet. I'm like, what's the matter there, bud? Oh, I just can't move myself to dent an instrument. It's such a beautiful work of art. <laughs> and it was like a student line, you know, old Holton or something. And I said, here, let me see it. Bam, bam, bam. <laughs> Drop it. He just looked at me and laughed in shock. I said, go ahead and I'll try it. Oh, but that's how you learn. You gotta get can't learn how to fix something unless you can get your hands on it and you know we weren't working on customer instruments pretty much but you can see that that contour is already pretty darn nice and for what this is a student line middle school trumpet we're not going to worry about any witness marks or anything like that. That's not really a big deal. Even on a pro horn, you know, the idea of making this look brand new would involve a lot of buffing and polishing and possibly removing 
some metal to get nicks and scratches out. So then you're kind of getting into the overhaul or refinish or restoration type world. And that's just not practical. And buying a new bell for something like this would probably be a $400, I don't know, $250 to $400 proposition. So why do that? And the object of this, this whole world is get these instruments playing and functional again, get them back in the kids' hands for another year of musical wonder. So we burnished on that. Now we're going to go ahead and roll and con roll the contour again and blend in any any um, burnishing marks. You know, or you might have faceted the brass or put lines in it a little bit. You just want to roll that and blend it together. I'd like to think that I would have been like Paul Revere back in the day if, if if I would have grown up a couple hundred years ago. I'd be like a silversmith, you know. Revere ware, you know. Making silverware and cups and drinking uh, items. So that's looking pretty good. Now we're going to get up into here and take care of those dents. Again, there's a number of ways you can go about this, but we'll try this roller. We'll just leave it on here. I know my hands get in the way, but my hands have to do the work. So the camera is secondary. You know what I need? I need a good POV camera that I can wear on my head. Wouldn't that be cool? And then I could you could see where I'm seeing it. Send your donations. Link information provided in the description below. <laughs> All right. All right. So I'm just rubbing straight in and out on this mandrel, this roller rather. You can do the same thing with a, a tapered mandrel. But that's that's pretty pretty nice. I need to uh, do one more thing. Just good measure, I think. Let me put it the other way. The hook burnisher. We'll get on here now and roll this stem and throat area with the hook burnisher. This is a Getzen Capri trumpet, so it was a mid-grade instrument built back in the 1970s. So it's, you know, like 40, 45 years old. But a well-made instrument, taken care of, cleaned regularly. Like I like to use a chem flush process, which uses a a mild acid solution to dissolve the calcification and lime buildup inside. Um, taken care of, kept oiled, serviced regularly. That'll last you years, 50 years, 100 years even. A poor quality instrument will never function well. It'll never provide with a very good very good it won't provide you with a very good experience performing per, playing experience it'll 
will just be a real drag. So I just sprayed, sprayed some pledge on it and that just will remove the paraffin wax and get fingerprints off of it and just give it a nice little light coating. Now look at that. You can see there are lots of scratches and stuff in this lacquer, okay? That's typical of an older instrument. You can see the scratches in the lacquer. It's nothing I put in that, that was there. But you can see that that contour, look at the light. You can see that contour is real nice. And that was really sharp dense, really sharp bell damage. And that contour is looking really quite nice. They're going to be very pleased with this. Very happy to have this back into circulation in their middle school band. Middle school, high school band. A lot of kids can't afford their own instruments. So something like this will provide a very good and useful instrument for somebody who can't afford and that is a nice trumpet. Now there's a nice dent there in that lead pipe. I'm going to take that out too. Lead pipe dents are way more tricky to remove than bell dents because you've got a fairly nar narrow diameter tube that's pretty stout. Actually, we may need to put a patch over this because I see a little crack. So we're going to go ahead and take care of that dent first. Now I've got a roller on there, or not a roller, but a ball on this mandrel. And I'm just going to kind of roll across that get some pressure on that. Now we can all see that this pipe has got some red rot. See these spots? There's not a lot of pink there, but there's definitely some decomposition going on. And you got to be careful because you could split the pipe and then have to install a new pipe. We don't want to do that. But that comes from playing the instrument. It comes from the brass maybe not being of the highest quality or from not having the instrument cleaned regularly. And um, all those things are important to keeping the instrument running for a long time. Now, we've got 50 years on this instrument. Well, maybe not 50, but at least 40. So that's lasted a pretty good time. Now there is a high spot there and there's a little crack so I'm just going to tap that down. I'm gonna, just going to install um, a small patch on there, a brass, a brass band patch and this will be totally functional for many years yet to come and if we ever need to we can put a new lead pipe on there but that would probably run with parts and labor, it'd probably run 150, 175, maybe 200 bucks, depending on the instrument. But when you compare that to uh, a new trumpet of similar build quality, you know, you're talking 800 or 1,000 dollars. So it's usually very well worth it to replace a lead pipe if you need to. Um, on some of the cheaper stuff and some of the knockoff brands that are hitting our shores, a lot of that stuff isn't worth the um, the brass that it's made out of there's just there's so many instruments I see where the build quality please see the the video I did on low build build quality uh, cheaply made band instruments that tells you a lot but build quality is so important and the fit of the valves the fit of the slide the type of plating they use on the valves 
all that is really important and there's a lot of stuff that it's a piece of metal that looks like a trumpet you can make a sound with it but a good quality instrument you will cry once when you first buy it because it's expensive but a bad quality instrument you will cry every time you use it because you will know that you never got what you really wanted okay there are lots of ways to build a patch for a lead pipe you can take another old lead pipe and you can cut a section out of it and then remove the receiver on the existing lead pipe and slide that patch down on there and it provides a full sleeve um, you can cut a decorative patch and, and a lot of times you get wear through spots and you know I've seen decorative diamond patches underneath that's fine on this situation um, just knowing what we're dealing with I'll be honest with you I didn't even see that crack so I'm going to throw this in as part of this service on this repair so I'm not going to charge I'm just going to do a quick patch and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a tube I'm going to cut it down the side and then I'm going to cut it to the length that I want and then I, I'll, I will anneal it so I can spread it apart and then wrap it back around um, it will not have to be um, it's just got a crack on the one side so it can be open on the one one end that'll be hidden behind everything so you won't really see that but it will serve the purpose of sealing that crack and be a, a sturdy repair um, and again this is just kind of a freebie I'm throwing in for the folks it's actually for a band program so here we go More speed will help. There we go. Let's cut this tube. I'm going to cut this tube to length now. So I made the sleeve, the patch, I've annealed it lightly so that it can be bent around here and rounded off the edges. You can see where the, no, oh, where is it, can't even hardly see it. There's a slight crack right there and right there. Now I've kind of burnished that down and sanded the lacquer off so it's kind of blending in but <laughs> that would that would pop through. So we'll go ahead and pop this on just like a dentist would pop a cap on your tooth. Right? Sort of. We're going to wrap around here. I'm going to hide the seam back down here so that it can't be seen or felt by the player. Um, just for good cosmetics. It's, it's really got nothing other than that. All right. So apply some soldering flux to this. Now I've kind of pinched that so it's smaller than the diameter of the pipe. And there, our seam is down underneath very hard to see. It's just going to look like a sleeve over it. I don't want to crank this too tight because I don't want to leave a mark in that softened patching material. That was just an old tube from like a, a slide or something. That's all that was. Okay. So, the name of the game here, in this situation, is to seal up that crack. That's really what we're doing.
Now there may be some viewers eyeballing this with skepticism saying, wow, the only right way to do that is to replace that lead pipe. It's rotting out. Well, I wouldn't disagree with you. However, there are realities that you have to deal with. And one of those realities is band programs lack sufficient funds to keep their instruments maintained. They get new money for new instruments. Some school districts are even getting money so they can purchase a magic machine and uh, do their own ultrasonic cleanings and pretend to know all the ins and outs of even disassembling an instrument. And unfortunately, what happens in most of those cases is they do fall into some disuse because you always have to have somebody trained and skilled at using it. And if they're not, it's nothing more than giving a, a kid a box full of toolbox full of sockets and wrenches and uh, you know whatever some spark plugs and say you know make the car keep that car in good running condition that it's almost an insult to the craft but I will always have work because there's always things you can do on instruments if you don't want them cleaned I can do dent work I can do other work the only thing I would ask is that if you want to have me do that, you got to have those instruments clean first. I can't, can't rub dent balls through a dirty old crusty tube and, you know, I can't, you know, I can't uh, work on, you know, if, if your slides are out of parallel or you, you pulled on them and destroyed a tube, you know, you're going to have a lot more work. It's really not worth the hassle, in my opinion. But I'm not going to be able to solve any problems in this world, so why try? So I just cool that off, Let's cool it to the touch. Snip that binding wire. Now this, like I said, this instrument will go a long time, um, barring any unforeseen destruction. And this may go long enough so that it will warrant a lead pipe replacement in the future. You know, maybe five years down the road. And then we can deal with it at that time. And at that time, probably they will say, we don't have any money for that kind of a repair, so we're just going to get a new instrument. And then they can do that. Which would be too bad, because these old Getsons were great. They had good valves. They've got a lifetime warranty on their valves, which is transferable. So if you got plating that's coming off the valves, we send it to Getson, and they take care of us. They're good folks right here in Wisconsin. All right, so I'm just buffing the area with a piece of ragging cloth, which has got triple E compound on it. And I will follow that with, hmm, where did my rouge cloth go? <laughs> rouge cloth. We'll take and get that color to shine with the red rouge. Jewelers rouge. Beautiful. Okay, so that's what we're looking at. Now that's a very functional, good quality patch. Neatly soldered, nicely buffed. I will clear lacquer over that now, just to protect it. Um, and that is totally a reasonable thing to do on something like this. Um, again, they're, they're putting quite a bit of money on in it, uh, having it cleaned and have that dent work done. I had to re-solder the lead pipe, by the way. It was broken on three brace points. 
uh, it needs a third slide liar holder and a ring. All those parts and everything, that, this is adding up to be already a fairly expensive repair. That's why I'm just kind of throwing that in for him. It was something unforeseen I didn't see um, when I quoted this, so I'm just going to be a nice guy and do it and keep their trust in sending their stuff for me, whether it's just a cleaning or, or whatever. That's the benefit. You know, when you, you have a trust relationship, you send something to someone, you're taken care of. You know, you don't nickel and dime and worry about other little stuff. You just deal with it. Um, so anyway, that, that'll be totally sufficient, and this will be good to go for another 100,000 miles. Okay, I just wanted to do um, a kind of final video segment on this trumpet that I repaired the bell damage on, installed a new third uh, slide um, ring holder and ring and screw, and did that patch on the lead pipe, removed these dents in the second slide, and just put this back into great working order. Um, that turned out really nice, if I do say so myself. And um, this is going to be a very functional instrument for a kid. It's funny, I'm interrupting my uh, listening to... <laughs> There's a guy by the name of Monk Rowe, who was Hamilton, uh, doing it for the Hamilton uh, Jazz Archives, the Hamilton University, and he's interviewing John LaBarbera and how he <laughs> would write arrangements for Buddy Rich. and He played for Buddy, played trumpet for Buddy for four months, got fired a few times, but went on to be his arranger. I find that stuff so fascinating as I do my work and I work on instruments and I wonder who's going to play this instrument and what are they going to grow up to be? You know, maybe they're going to grow up to be a Maynard Ferguson or a John LaBarbera, an arranger, or maybe they're going to, you know, go on to Broadway and play shows or, or something. That's kind of a neat thing about this work. You know, you're providing a service for not only the band director and the program, but for the kids, you know? Using your gift so that they can develop their gift. That's kind of a cool thing. I think it's all got to do with understanding one's vocation. But enough for that for now. Thanks very much.